Inspiration for a video can come from many sources. There was a comment made a short while ago in one of my videos, which I read and instantly recognised as a textbook example of survivorship bias at play. This is an interesting topic for me as I come across it frequently, and so I put a lot of effort into making sure that I don't suffer from it myself as much as possible. The specific comment that you see on the screen was pointing out that this person had never had an issue with something that I'd previously pointed out as being problematic by design, and he'd never experienced a problem I'd highlighted. The insinuation, of course, is that despite my argument with data, because this person had not personally experienced the issue at hand, my point of view must therefore be invalid. It's a common fallacy that just because you haven't personally had an issue with something yet, that it's not dangerous. I've personally never been run down by a drunk driver, but that doesn't mean that they are not dangerous. The opposite phenomenon can happen where a person can have a freak accident with something and their perceived risk goes too far in the opposite direction. Reverse survivorship bias can be just as problematic as survivorship bias. But what is a bias? When you are mentally inclined for or against an idea, thing or person, that is a bias. Biases are usually learned, and they're highly dependent on variables like a person's socioeconomic status, their race, ethnicity, educational background. Uh, you know, in the case of survivorship bias, it's often based on personal experiences. With survivorship bias, people can miscalculate the risks of something because their personal experience skews their anticipated outcome to be higher or lower in their head than it would be in you know, actual likelihood in the real world. To understand how important survivorship bias is, we can start with Abraham Wald. Abraham Wald was a Hungarian Jewish mathematician and he was born in 1902. And one of the well-known statistical works of his during World War II was how to minimise the damage to bomber aircraft taken into account the survivorship bias in his calculations. The problem was simple. Enemy bullets could shoot down planes, and so an initiative to help strengthen the planes had been introduced. The planes that made it home had bullet holes where you could see where the enemy had fired on them, and people mapped these holes and a clear pattern had emerged. Some people wanted to add armour to these places on the aircraft as a result, but Wald noted that the military only considered the aircraft that had survived their missions and made it back, as any aircraft that had been shot down or otherwise lost had logically also been rendered unavailable for assessment. Wald realised this, and he recognised that the places that the military wanted to reinforce were actually the same places where you can shoot an aircraft, and it's going to be fine. Because all those aircraft that were in this statistical model had already made it home. Therefore, the reinforcement should be applied to the remaining places. In other words, by understanding the survivorship bias, he got the military to do the complete opposite of what it had intended to do originally. This unintended backwards thinking plagues modern life too. How many people have an older relative sending them this garbage on Facebook? The only reason that they are around today to send this is because if they're not one of the 412,000 people in the US who die prematurely each year due to historical exposure to lead paint, and they're not one of the 41,000 people who die each year of secondhand smoke, and they're not one of the 1,073 Texans who died in 2020 from not wearing a seatbelt. So back to our friend. He's not a victim with North American sockets, and you know, he's remained safe for 50 of those years. So what happens when you go the complete opposite direction? Reverse survivorship bias is something that I've seen in IT throughout my career. Most of the time, everything runs smoothly, and as a result, it goes unnoticed. And Often, it's even taken for granted. However, the minute something breaks or crashes, everybody notices and will remember it for quite a while afterwards. In this case, the successes are discarded from memory, but the failures are what are remembered. Another common example of this is where people remove certain coverages from their insurance policies only to have that rare but not impossible act of God event or whatever other catastrophe suddenly wreck their situation. In this polarised world that we live in, I'm noticing this more and more, where people are literally throwing away statistically important information and not rationalising the whole picture containing all of the information. And so that's why I wanted to really cover this subject. Thanks for watching.